Good evening, Los Angeles, and welcome to the very first, the one and only inaugural Swiftologist Grammy Awards. Give me a hand for my genius idea that Shut I've had today. Okay. Now, some of you may be wondering, what are the Swiftologist Grammy Awards? Well, let me tell Shut you. Shut your fucking mouth. The Swiftologist mouth. Grammy Awards are the Grammys, but all the nominees are various Taylor Swift songs and albums, and I am the Academy, so I get to choose who gets what, and nobody gets a say, and nobody can tell me what to do about it, all right? Stop. Does that sound good to everyone? Some of these are real categories, some of these are made-up categories, but what's for sure to be expected from the Swiftologist Grammys is that they will be unhinged. I mean, I even got dressed up for the occasion, okay? I'm, I'm serious about this. This is serious business to me. So thank you all for coming to the Staples Center in LA. Is it even called that? I don't know, never been to LA, but here I am at the Men in Music Business Conference. Just kidding, I'm actually at the Swiftologist Grammy Awards. Now, speaking of the Men in Music Business Conference, before we get into this incredible, amazing, show-stopping, iconic, never been done before award ceremony that I'm about to bless you with, may I remind you that if you are a Swifty, then it is imperative that you check out The Evolution of a Snake, which is my podcast that I co-host with my friend Madeline about the life and times of Taylor Swift, who is, uh, I'm sure, someone that you're interested in if you've happened to stumble across this video. She is a, a singer heard of it? We go year by year through her career and we analyze the life and times, the ups and downs, the turmoil, the good, the bad, the ugly of everything pertaining to the Taylor Swift cinematic universe. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to listen to it because we just made a Patreon and for $6 a month, you can get two bonus episodes. And let me tell you that we are spilling it all on the Patreon, behind the paywall. We're being freer and braver than we've ever been before, and we're only gonna keep winning. So get on the winning team and come and join the Patreon. We are having so much fun over there. And also don't forget to like this video, comment, arguing with my awards choices down below, and subscribe to this channel because, you know, we just hit 15,000 subscribers and Swiftologists to the moon. Am I right? Oh my God! Am I right, LA? Fucking God! Cool. So our nominees couldn't be here tonight, first of all, because they are not real. They are songs. And second of all, because they are being held in a way Waiting pen at the Eras Tour Zoo, where they're, you know, just kind of in purgatory, waiting to see if they will, in fact, get called upon to do a trick. Some of them are maybe for sure going to be included on the set list and shouldn't be. August, don't blame me, I'm looking at you guys. And some of them, the absolutely criminally underrated masterpieces, I have a feeling will continue to go disrespected forever and always. Last kiss, breathe. I mean, they're in jail and they shouldn't be. That's a constitutional rights violation of mine. But either way, today we're going to be taking all of the space and the time that we need to appreciate these girlies. Of course, I'm going to have the big four, record of the year, song of the year, album of the year, and best new artist. It's actually album of the century because there are so many types of albums to choose from at this point. But I just want to let you guys know that some of these categories you will be familiar with and some of them might seem a little made up to you because they are made up. So our first award this evening is for best new artist. Now, this is a rather expansive category in, this, in the Swiftologist universe because Taylor has been very prolific in creating different kinds of things at a very rapid pace. So I was hmm, a little befuddled as to who exactly could be nominated in this category. But, you know, the best new artist is a girly who is coming from a storied past, right? A good tradition. She's following in the line of some excellent things that Taylor Swift has done in the past, but also she's introducing something new to the canon or she's doing it in a different way. She's quirky. She's not like the other girls, but also she is similar to the other girls. So without further ado, here are the nominees for best new artist. Antihero, Midnight Rain, Karma, you're on your own, kid. And the Grammy goes to <laughs> Karma, to no one's surprise at all. I made a 30 minute video dissecting the excellency of this song. Now it was kind of a toss up for the Academy between you're on your own, kid, and Karma, because you're on your own, kid, is that kind of beautiful patchwork quilt of all the best things about Taylor Swift's songwriting and all the different moments of, you know, the eras throughout the year. But I think that Karma is just a bit of fun. It's good fun. It's she's working with a new producer and a new collaborator on this track. And it's just, it's got this knowing wink, that blank space satire. It's c'est magnifique. Congratulations, Karma. You are the best new artist. Up next, after Karma's rightful win, is our very first 
Genre Award. And the genre that we're going to be awarding today is the best heavy metal performance, because as we know, Taylor Swift is a heavy metal artist. What is the definition of a metal song? A metal song is about intensity, fury, rage, distorted guitars, a very intense and almost animalistic experience. And it might seem as though Taylor doesn't have any songs that are kind of in line with that vibe, but let me tell you, Taylor Swift is a heavy metal artist. She is. She has so many metal songs that it was hard for me to narrow it down to just a couple to nominate, but I did it. And here are the Academy selections of the best heavy metal songs for Taylor Swift's discography. We are never ever getting back together. 1989 tour version. Vigilante shit. Forever and always. Red. Taylor's version. And the Grammy goes to... Question! Yes, I know you're surprised, you're surprised. Question wasn't even in the category. Question wasn't even in the realm of possibility in your brain, but not for me. I mean, even I was surprised. She came up on stage and she took me by surprise. And that's just the power, the beauty, the fury, the raw energy of Question. You never know what the fuck that song is gonna do. You don't know what that song is about. Have you ever had someone kiss you in a crowded room and 15 seconds later, everyone was making fun of you? then what did you do? Exactly, period. You don't. You don't know. You don't understand. You don't get it. Do you remember? I'm sure you don't. And if you don't, let me remind you that Question is the best metal performance of Taylor Swift's career. The song makes you feel crazy, feral, and unhinged. And you know what? I love that about her. Now it's time for our first performance intermission of this evening. And I'll be performing spoken word poetry throughout to keep you guys on your toes. To keep the crowd entertained. Can I get an amen? Motherfuck off yeah. my page. To keep you guys going throughout this evening and, you know, mixing it up and matching it between our categories. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I think actually instead of doing spoken word, I might do a prayer because I think that we should all kind of get together and say, actually, I have a couple of prayers to say. Let's start with really what I should have done at the beginning of this video. Let's bless the food, okay? Dear Lord, please ensure that Scott Borchetta and Scooter Braun have a lifetime of, you know, just general displeasure and no merriment at all. No jovial happy times, just pure kind of like unadulterated misery forever. Amen. I think we should follow that prayer with something a little bit more positive, a little bit more hopeful. So I'm going to be doing a spoken word performance now, and I hope that you like it. I'm drunk in the back of the car, and I cried like a motherfucking baby coming home from the bar, said, I'm fine, but it wasn't true. I do not listen to me. I don't want to keep secrets just to keep you. I snuck in through the garden gate every night, every night, not just one night, not just two nights, every night that summer just to seal my fate. And I screamed for whatever it's worth. I love you. Ain't that the worst thing you ever heard? Exactly. Up next is the best bleep bloop song. Now we all know how I feel about the pots and pans, the real metal bleep bloop songs, high infidelity, king of my heart, not really my thing. However, I do think there's a category of, you know, electronic EDM inspired dance music that does categorize as a bleep bloop song. And I want to destigmatize the bleep bloop label that I've given to some of the bleep bloop songs because I feel as though maybe they deserve a second shake or maybe the electronic bleep bloop influences actually add something, a layer of texture a bit of richness to something that maybe was a little bit, you know, simple or straightforward to begin with. So with that being said, I would like to recognize the best bleep bloop performance of Taylor Swift's career. These are the nominees. The very first night, message in a bottle, bejeweled, London boy, welcome to New York. And the Grammy goes to... Welcome to New York. I know you're all surprised. Some of you are shaking, crying, throwing up. You're shocked. You can't believe it. Welcome to New York is actually a really good song. I've decided. That's like a new pivot that I've had. It might not be, you know, my favorite song on 1989. It's certainly not in my top even 50 Taylor Swift songs of all time, but it slaps. Why lie? Why deny it? When I moved to New York as a young child, 18 years old for college, I was obsessed with this song. I had it on repeat. I was looking at the Empire State Building and listening to Welcome to New York. It's been waiting for you. And I think that a formative experience in every young Swifty's life is going to New York and playing Welcome to New York. And because it has that really, you know, pivotal, transcendental moment in all of our lives, it deserves a space. It's like 22. You only go to New York and listen to Welcome to New York for the first time once. You only listen to 22 when you turn 22 for the first time once. These are rites of passage of Swifty experiences. And so, you know, I just want to give Welcome to New York her flowers. All right, we're going to get into our second big category of the night. This is Record of the Year. So Record of the Year takes into account not just the songwriting, but the overall 
production and performance of the song. We're looking at the songwriters, we're looking at the sound engineers, we're looking at the producers. This is about also, in my view, a moment. What was the culture shifting moment? What was the real kind of groundbreaking, earth shattering, everybody stop and have a look what you made me do, oh my God, what is Taylor Swift doing moment? Um, kind of hard to find after look what you made me do, but I'm trying, okay, I'm trying. And these are the nominees for record of the year. Antihero. You're on your own, kid. Lavender Haze, all too well, the 10 minute version. And the Grammy goes to Antihero. I mean, Antihero has slowly become one of my favorite songs from Midnight's. It just has that really, really earworm quality that I haven't had from Taylor in so long. And I think it was something that I was really craving after the kind of the doldrums, the polite, the pleasant doldrums of Folklore and Evermore. I wanted a return to form, an upbeat banger, a moment. And Antihero is the moment. Moment. I know I've said that it's clumsy songwriting and yeah, okay, it is. And you know, shake it off and we are never ever getting back together, I guess, are technically clumsy songwriting too. But that can't take away her shine. It can't dull the shine of the anti-hero. It's me, I'm the problem, it's me. It's iconic, it's legendary. And also everybody loved it. Everybody moved. Every single person in every corner of this earth was awakened from their slumber and shaken to their very core when anti-hero came out for the first time. The next category is an original category. This is a Swiftologist entry into the drama genre awards and this genre is the best slow burn now Taylor has a very big, large, expansive discography, and we've had a lot of new fans kind of join the fandom in the last couple of years. We also have a new platform with which to disseminate the gospel, which is Taylor Swift's canonical discography, to the masses. And those masses have really kind of picked up, revamped, remixed, remastered, and reimagined some of the greatest, best, oldest hits, even some songs that have been, you know, maybe undiscovered or unloved or not given, you know, the real kind of credit and attention they deserve. So these are the nominees for the best slow burn. Enchanted, Wildest Dreams, Don't Blame Me, and Lover. And the winner is Enchanted, because come on now, she is the icon. She is the moment. I was enchanted to meet you, okay? I, it's as simple as that. I don't have to say anything else. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. And if you don't, then I honestly feel bad for you. Enchanted is just one of those sprawling, ridiculous, beautiful, happenstance ballad moments that could only be written by someone as unhinged and precocious as 19, 20 year old Taylor was at the time when she was writing Speak Now. She was coming into her own and finding her new footing in this adult world, but she couldn't help but bring along that wide-eyed sense of naivete and girlishness with her because who else is gonna use the word wonderstruck with a dead ass look in their eye? Only a crazy person. Enchanted accepting her award really leads me into my next category, which is the most disrespected album of the year. And you know, there are just so many contenders for this because we have the re-recordings and then we also have some albums that Taylor refused to promote. Evermore, I'm looking at you. Without further ado, here are the nominees for the most disrespected album of the year. Speak Now, Reputation, 1989, The Debut, Evermore, Yes, I realize that's basically half of the discography, but I don't make the rules. I'm not the one out here disrespecting them, okay? That's not me. That's not my job. And the winner of the most disrespected album goes to Speak Now Taylor's version. It was very close. The Academy was very torn between Evermore and Speak Now Taylor's version, but Speak Now Taylor's version has been hinted at. The girl was never trying to pretend to us that she was going to do something else with Evermore. She never gave us Easter eggs. She didn't lead us down a winding, confusing, upsetting path. And yet with Speak Now, it's like, now it's like she's being spat on every single day of her life. And unfortunately, that's kind of canonical at this point. Speak Now is criminally underlooked always and forever. Now we're going to take a serious moment to have a candlelight vigil for our lost sister, Speak Now. Um, so I'm just going to say a little prayer and we will all bow our heads and um, just just send out good energy and good vibes for her safe return to our hands in the form of Taylor's version. Okay, here we go. You are an expert at sorry and keeping lines blurry. Never impressed by me acing your tests. All the girls that you've run dry have tired lifeless eyes because bitch, you burn them out. Speak now, we're praying for your safe return. All right, moving on. Did someone say yeehaw? Shut the fuck up! Yes, you did. Here are the nominees for the best country performance. Now, you might think that there aren't enough songs to include in this category, but let me tell you, I say something different. And here is exactly what I say on that about that. The nominees for best country solo performance are Right Where You Left Me, Cowboy Like Me, I Bet You Think About Me, and Better Man. And the winner is... 
right where you left me because we love to have a new song, not a song from the vault, not a reworked, remixed, reimagined, remastered song. We love to have a fresh plant grown from the soil of Taylor Swift, inspired by her country flavored roots. Right Where You Left Me is undeniably a country song because of the way that the story is written and the way that the narrative's perspective changes and the kind of conceit that is threaded throughout of this girl just frozen in time at the age of 23. I mean, many of us live in delusion, including Taylor Swift, about whether or not she will ever do another country album again because she doesn't look like she's gonna do it. And personally, I would like to see it. Now we have another big award. It's Song of the Year. And you know, the songwriting is the bread and the butter of being a Taylor Swift fan. This is what we're all here for. If you're not here for that, if you're here to make conspiracy theories or I don't know, do whatever else it is that you crazy people do, then I don't know what you're here for, but I'm here for the work, for the literature, for the written texts, okay? So try to pick a song of the year when you're working with an artist like Taylor Swift, whose caliber and writing standard is so hard, can feel a little daunting, a little overwhelming, but God damn it, I will try. And here are the nominees for song of the year. All too well. Well, the 10 minute version. You're on your own, kid. Would have, could have, should have. And the Grammy goes to all too well the 10 minute version. Listen, it deserves it. it. It's earned. It has such a hallowed, incredible story behind it, found footage. I don't need to explain exactly all of the reasons why all too well 10 minutes is a songwriting feat, an accomplishment of great proportions. But I do feel kind of bad that you're on your own, kid, is getting the red treatment at this Grammy ceremony. She's getting nominated. She's getting real close too. She's getting really close and she's not winning anything. Um, so maybe I will have to create a new category called best you're on your own kid performance. And the winner of that is you're on your own kid. Up next is the award for the most disappointing, pointless collaboration. And, you know, we had some strong contenders in this category. It was fierce competition. Uh, each one was becoming more useless than the next when the Academy was trying to decide who should win. And yet there was one Supreme. And I think you all know who it is. But here are the nominees for the most disappointing Taylor Swift collaboration. Run, featuring Ed Sheeran. Snow on the Beach, allegedly featuring Lana Del Rey. You All Over Me, not featuring Marin Morris. No Body, No Crime, also not featuring Haim. What a lineup, huh? What a disappointing batch of girlies. And the Grammy goes to Snow on the Beach, allegedly featuring Lana Del Rey. Where the fuck is she? Locate her for me. Uh, I don't believe that who's are, you know, equivalent to a feature. She couldn't even get a line. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think Taylor was afraid that Lana would eat her up. And you know what? She probably had some right to think that way. Up next is another genre award. We have the best rap performance award. Taylor Swift, not known to be a rapper, but you would be surprised at the fucking bars she has spat throughout her career. And I wanna take a moment to appreciate her flow. She is truly an underrated female MC. And that's why I'm going to be acknowledging her performance as a rap artist in the Swiftologist Grammy Awards. The nominees for best rap performance are the other side of the door, ready for it, better than revenge. Look what you made me do, holy ground. And the Grammy goes to a tie. Yes, at the Swiftologist Grammy Awards, I can make songs tie. And the tie is between holy ground and better than revenge. Better than revenge because I would be scared. A lot of people were scared when they heard better than revenge for the first time. Camila Bell, you were the number one person that was scared and Taylor really did you wrong. But unfortunately, I have to turn my feminism off and put better than revenge on as per usual. Holy ground, I mean, are you even a Swifty or a rapper if you can't do the entire first verse and chorus of Holy Ground on one breath? I don't know. I think not. Let me show you how it's done. I'm going to take a breath and I'm going to do the entire first verse and chorus of Holy Ground. I was reminiscing just the other day while having coffee all alone and Lord, it took me away back to a first glance feeling on New York time back when you fit in my poems like a perfect rhyme took off faster than green light go yeah you skipped the conversation when you already know I left a note on the door with a joke we made and that was the first day and darling it was good never looking down and right there where we stood was holy ground I mean I definitely took a breath <laughs> so I flopped um, apparently I'm not the real Swifty Grammy award for Swifty of the year does not go to the Swiftologist on this one and we're getting into our last two categories this one is a very important one this next one best religious performance best gospel song songs that take you to church songs that make you meet Jesus Christ himself or whoever your God is makes you look that thing or person or entity in the eye and say 
I believe in you. I'm home. I trust that you will take care of my spirit and whatever comes next after this. Also, all of these songs had to have some sort of like religious element to the songs. And I think you'll understand what I mean when you, and I think you'll understand what I mean when you hear the nominees because the nominees for best gospel performance are State of Grace, Don't Blame Me, Ivy, and Cruel Summer. And the winner is Cruel Summer, just kidding. Cruel Summer wins a different award, which is best song of the entire century ever created by any person known to man. That's a different award for her. That's a whole different video for her, actually. The winner of best gospel performance is Don't Blame Me. And some of you might be surprised to hear me say that because I'm not a huge fan of Don't Blame Me. Like, I mean, I get it. It's it's kind of okay. I think the writing is a bit vague and banal and a bit bland just for my personal taste. But I can't deny that when I hear it, I am in a place of God. I am in a place of praying. I am in a place of getting on my knees and asking, can I go to heaven? And hearing the answer come down resoundingly loud from above, no. And sadly, Swiftologists, we've come to the last award of this evening. And the last award is for album of the century. Not album of the year, not album of the month, not album of the decade, album of the motherfucking century. Here are the nominees for record of the century. Speak Now, 1989, Evermore, Not Lover, Also Not Midnight's, Red, and the Grammy goes to record of the century is officially, we all know, Red. She is that bitch. She always has been that bitch. Her re-recording rollout process, I'm telling you, Taylor's version of Red, she's going to be the one that we look back on and say, damn, that's the one that got treated with the most care. And as she fucking should be. So let me know how you feel about all of these awards that I've given out. Do you agree? Are there any categories that you would add if I were to do another one? What should the next Swiftologist Grammy Awards be for? Should it be for Lana Del Rey? Should it be for a different artist? I don't know. I'm also taking video ideas down below. I'm working on an ultraviolence video essay, but that's going to take me some time. As we all know, the Lana video I need to percolate on them to come up with, you know, a level of excellence at that scale. I have to really kind of like sit down and, you know, get in touch with my religiosity, my, my, my Jesus connection to Lana Del Rey that I have. But if you want more content from me every single week and my friend Madeline too, you need to come over to patreon.com slash whiptologist and sign up because you do not want to miss what's coming on the evolution of a snake. All right. Goodbye, Swifties. I will see you in the next video.